Rama Nation, Chris Cobain here bringing you another Pokemon X and Y, or wow, X and Y, whoops. I knew I was going to do that eventually, I just didn't know where. Excuse me, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi Battle. I'm glad I caught that as soon as I did, because I thought when I made that mistake that I'd keep it that way throughout the video, and then get mad at myself rewatching it. Anyway, though, um, this is also the first Wi-Fi battle uh, I'm bringing to you for to you, excuse me, from my new computer, which is really cool, so thanks to your guys and all your donations and all your support and all that stuff, I was able to afford uh, an actual desktop computer, and now I don't have to stream and do YouTube videos on a laptop, which a laptop has not never been built to do, so hopefully content gets better from here on out, except for my commentary because it blows, but that's okay anyway. Anyhow, we have a really good battle here against uh, one of my... Big regulars, his name is Vetlay, or Vetleb, as you guys as have called him for a long time. Uh, you guys probably know him, and this is a really, really intense battle, so let's take a look at the team previews. I have Jolteon, Gudra, Umbreon, Weezing, Sandslash, and Mega B Drill. My opponent is carrying a very unique and interesting team, um, a lot of really cool Pokemon in here. You got the Victory Bell, the Raikou, Haxorus, Megalo, Pony Crook. And Pyroar. Now I've seen this team a couple of times before, or I've seen some of the strats. The one of the main thing he tries to do is that Victory Bell is Chlorophyll and Life Orb. He sets up Sunny Day on the Pyroar and goes from there. He's actually carrying Growth, which gives you plus two to both attacks in the in the Sun. He's a mix set. I think his move set is Sludge Bomb, Power Whip, and Weather Ball for you know Fire in the Sun. So it's a really cool team, and. Uh, Basically, right off the bat, I knew that he was going to go right for trying to do massive work with the Victory Bell. So based on that, um, I knew that he'd probably be leading with Pyroar, so I could lead with Jolteon pretty easily and kind of Volt Switch out. So, like I said, he does re lead with the Pyroar, and I do lead with Jolteon. Now, typically, I would be wary of the Krook in the back, but in this case, I know that if I use Hidden Power Ice to predict that, and he ends up going for Sunny Day that I'm in a lot of trouble right off the bat. So instead, I just do go for Volt Switch. It does not kill. Now, he's actually not a Heat Rot set. He is a Focus Sash set, so I couldn't have Thunderbolted him to death there, just in case anyone was wondering. So I'm going to bring in Gudra. The reason I bring in Gudra is, as he goes for the Sunny Day is not only do I wall this pretty well, but I wall the Victory Bell incredibly well as well. As, uh, incredibly well, as well so... He knows that, so he's just going to go for Hyper Voice. Um, I actually went for Flamethrower just in case. I knew with the sun up that I'd kill this Pyroar anyway, so that's a quick 1-0 for me. And now all I really have to do is stall out this non-Heat Rock Sun, and I can be good. And it brings in Axorus here. Now, I've actually been swept by this Axorus before. Um, he actually carries D-Dance and Swords Dance, so knowing he's doing both, there's no way I'm switching out on, a, on an automatic setup, so... Uh, typically, he runs a Lumberry, so I was actually very surprised, and I use it for Dragon Pulse, and he turns out to be Focus Sash instead. He runs a Lumberry because of Outrage, you can fix the confusion, but he's actually Focus Sash on this one, <clears throat> meaning he was able to set up a Dragon Dance for basically free there, and take me down, so Gudra goes away. Now, unfortunately, this is one of those teams I'm running where I don't carry any priority, so this guy becomes a massive threat. He is Mole Breaker, but he's also, he can hit me with Earthquake, but... He's also locked into Outrage, and I know that Weezing can take a plus one Outrage, at least. Um, now, unfortunately, he's got very very little to no recovery. Uh, Weezing can only, outside of Black Sludge and Rest, I guess, get Pain Split. So, I carry Pain Split. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a hard time for me to get him back up and running anyway. So, I, I decide to stay in here. This is a Calm Minding Raikou. So I don't want to switch and risk him going straight for a Calm Mind. So I actually stand. I went for Clear Smog just in case maybe he set up Calm Mind. I can get rid of it. But he just goes for Excess Entry and I go down. Which is okay because, again, I was kind of crippled at that point anyway. And he served his purpose. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm going to bring out Sand Slash. Now, I believe at this point, he uh, feared for his son running out and him, him losing you know, time to do work with his Victory Bell. Because without the sun, it's kind of useless. Uh, so he switches out to take an Earthquake. It does, I think, a little more than he thought it would. But he does survive, and he is going to be able to completely glitter at me with Power Whip. Now, unfortunately, typically, my Sand Slash has a Rocky Helmet set. Um, I didn't have a Rocky Helmet yet at this point, because this was pretty early in the game uh, for me. 
and competitive battling, so I was carrying leftovers. If I was Rock Ailment, he'd be dead right off the bat, but the sun does go away anyway, meaning I can go into B Drill and outspeed him. Now, disclaimer real quick. I'm going to kill this thing with Fell Stinger. Fell Stinger is a move that maybe not a lot of you or some of you don't know what it is. Uh, it's a pretty weak bug attack, but if you kill with it, it boosts your attack by two. Now, I'm running it for that very purpose. To try to set up, and then with Adaptability Poison Jab, you know, I'm basically like wreck mode here. Um, now, he's going to go with a low punny here. I know Fake Out's coming. I do carry Protect for when I need to Mega, and I can't for, you know, for fast Pokemon and such, so I do make the easy play here and go ahead and protect on the fake out and I am going to body him with poison jab now he put could have run in crook there um, to set up intimidate and no he could live a fell stinger but I think he was fearing that I was carrying uh, X's as well so which I'm not on this set so he does bring in crook here that's his best option obviously he's gonna get the intimidate off now I only have fell stinger on this as a bug attack poison jabs not gonna work drill runs not gonna do much uh, so I have to go for Fell Stinger, and it only does about half. Um, wouldn't even have killed if uh, I didn't lose an attack boost there. And obviously Beedrill's attack, or Beedrill's shitty defense, excuse me, is going to completely be useless here, and he's going to get straight o code by the Krook. So now we're down to a 2-1-2. This battle's been really good so far. I'm going to bring in Jolteon. I could predict him to bring in uh, 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 Raikou here, but I don't really want to. I know that even if he switches, I can, uh, I, I'm around the back to kind of stop him, but he does stay in, which is good, and I am going to take him out with Hidden Power, making it that 2-1-1. So now, obviously, Raikou coming in now. Like I said before, this is a calm minding Raikou, and I'm completely aware that he's about to set it up. So I'm going to bring in my special wall, which hasn't made his debut in the game yet. That is going to be Shadow the Umbreon. He is shiny. He was a birthday present for back in November. And like I said, this thing is going to start setting up Calm Mind, so... Now, at this point, um, it, it comes down, because I'm not a typical Umbreon set. I don't carry Toxic. I don't care. I... Do I carry Protect? No, I do carry Protect with Witch, my bad. But I don't carry Toxic anyway. You guys know me, more or less, and I'm not that stally kind of guy. So I could be that Toxic, you know, Wish, Protect kind of set. But I'm not. I'm actually a Curse Payback set, uh, which works really well on some special walls that can't really touch you and uh, or special attackers that can't really touch you and you can try to set up but he does go for just a plus two thunderbolt you see the special block of umbrian there he's able to live with a little over half hp meaning i can take three hits after leftovers and i can really start to fire off some uh some paybacks to really hurt this guy so he's gonna go for another thunderbolt he's really got no other option at this point it takes me down into the red i am gonna hit the payback a second time and basically at this point, because um, I have spec Shadow Ball, he's at plus two, but um, even after Leftovers Recovery, I'm pretty sure that a choice, uh, two choice spec Shadow Balls are going to kill this Raikou. The only question is, really, to me at this point, can he one hit Umbra, or not Umbra, excuse me, can he one hit Jolteon as Umbra goes down to the last Thunderbolt there? Because I'm almost positive at this point I can take him out with uh, two choice spec Shadow Balls, so... I did bring a Jolteon here, and I am going to go for the Shadow Ball, and as it turns out, I don't think I've ever played Vet and not crit him at some point in the game. I hadn't yet, so why not do it now and finish the game off with a critical hit Shadow Ball for the game. Um, we did Calc. His moveset, the best move he could have hit Jolteon with was Extra Sentry. We did Calc plus to Extra Sentry, and it did around 60-ish percent, so he even with a, like if he got a low roll and a crit, I don't think he even killed me. So, at really at that point, it didn't really matter. I, I know I was going to kill him with a second Shadow Ball anyway. He didn't have enough HP left to take two of them, so... Um, so that ends up being the game. Now, my B Drill, for my B Drill, who you saw use Fell Stinger, I actually switched that. He's carrying Excessor at this point, but the better move for you guys, if you're trying to, like, build uh, sets based off of me or whatever, I think the better move for him is actually U-Turn. Um... My, my moveset now actually changed it quite a bit. He's still got Protect, he's still got Poison Jab, but he's got X-Scissor and possibly U-Turn of the Future, and instead of uh, Drill Run, I'm actually running Knock Off, because Drill Run, I haven't seen a lot of use for. It never really one hits a Steel-type anyway, so you still get him to get obliterated, so... Which is obviously Drill Runs for Steel Coverage and everything, but... Whatever, whatever. It was a really, really clutch game, a really fun battle. Um, I really... I did get the show off. 
to the stream the power that Fell Stinger can have because typically it's not really something you think of. Um, I just thought it'd be cool with adaptability because it gets that power. I think it's only 30 base power, so it's actually 60 with uh, with adaptability, making it like the power of like a stab priority attack, which isn't really that bad, and it offers a nice little perk if you can get a kill with it. But you see the problem with it if you run it. Um, if you need a bug attack and you're not really powerful enough yet, you know, especially if you don't have a time to set up that 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 uh, fell stinger to get the plus two, and you're you're forced to hit something with just a weak bug attack in general, it could really hurt you. So it's better just to it makes it's it's more helpful. It comes in handy more if you're just running X scissor or U turn on B drill. But anyway, guys, obviously that is gonna be it. For this battle, thank you guys for taking the time out of the day to watch the video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. If you did so, make sure you do me a favor and hit the like button at the bottom of the uh, screen. Help me out a lot. Helps me out a lot. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so yet. I try to get our content, our content out as soon as I can. It's typically once every two to three days, but sometimes if something's going on, like Christmas in this case, uh, it takes me a little bit longer to get one out. And if you guys have not checked out my live stream, I encourage you to do so over at twitch.tv slash xchriscobane. I stream six days a week. And it's a really fun time. It gives you the best options to battle me and all the good stuff. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. Anyway, that is it for me, you guys. So I will see you guys in the next video.